And welcome to another exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. I'm your host, Michael. And tonight, I have on our show a truly unique and awesome team and their founder that I think you all are going to really enjoy hearing about and everything. And so, without further ado, I have no other words but to say welcome, Angela. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I have to say, it is amazing all that you do, and I can't even begin to sum up all that you do. So I'm, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and all the activities that you're into. Oh, absolutely. So my name is Angela. I, I call myself the ghost host with the most. And at this point, it's because I'm doing a whole lot of stuff. We're editing, producing, filming, doing live investigations and everything with the paranormal. And we have the privilege of talking with people like you to get a little bit deeper and learn a little bit more. <laughs> that is it's really cool. And so what, what's the meaning behind, because I know a lot of teams have meanings behind their team names. So <laughs> what, where did Ghost Hunting Beauties come from? So Ghost Hunting Beauties actually started with um, a lot of my friends took a girl's trip and I couldn't make it. And they went to the haunted Galvez. So all these beautiful women were dressed up with long dresses and heels and looked colorful and amazing. And they're in this haunted hotel in Galveston. And if anyone knows about the Galvez, there's so much activity there. And these girls were climbing through air vents. They were sneaking into rooms, tripping on their dresses going down the hallways and, and getting activity just with their cell phones, things that you see on all the major ghost hunting shows. And I'm, I'm back there sick as a dog laying in bed going, I think this, there could be something to this. I've never seen a bunch of ladies going ghost hunting and that's where kind of ghost hunting beauties was born. And we of course connected with spring paranormal investigations who has three beautiful women in that group as well. And Amy who runs the whole thing, she was just amazing. We met, we hit it off. And I thought a lot of these women were all into ghost hunting, all beautiful ghost hunting beauties. So that's where it started. That is awesome because that, that's taking a twist. And I imagine a lot of people when they first see your name and reach out are like, wait, oh, you actually do paranormal investigate? You're not just yes. modeling how to investigate modeling sheets going here we go and this sheet here is the lovely fabric 300 thread counts because it's from walmart <laughs> <laughs> no that's it's definitely i wanted to surprise people i ran the idea by a lot of people who are interested in ghost shows and by people who weren't interested in ghost shows so definitely was testing the market before i i launched it and before i even went to try to invest into it because if anyone has ever been ghost hunting, whether it's the people way at the top up here with ghost hunters on the big professional shows or people who are just taking their cell phones and equipment, it can get really expensive. So you must, you have to really love ghost hunting to be able to get out there staying up late. You have to be devoted to looking and going through all the paranormal evidence. You have to be devoted to what you're doing so everyone said, that's a neat concept. I really think you should go for it. So person after person, I, I even went to a minister. I'm not kidding. And that's one of the only people that says, don't do this. He goes, don't do this. He goes, I don't think you're ready for this. And I said, you know what? I said, I think I am. And, and we started doing investigations. And, and sure enough, I mean, there have been things that shock and surprise me, but it's kind of a good shock because I'm going, oh, man. Because when you watch TV, you don't know what's real and not real. It's it's a television show. I, I can't say that what they heard is a spirit or not a spirit. And when you're there and you're actually filming and you start hearing things, you go, oh, no, 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 no. That's not us. I was like, what was that? So you really start to become a believer. I mean, we've taken skeptics to believers in just one night. Right. And I agree with you that, you know. It, it's hard when you watch the shows on TV and it's like, you you know, they're all legit, you know, investigators. But when they're constantly going, 
did you hear that? And the person's always like, yes. I'm like, I rarely hear what other people hear. So how, so this team must be really in tune that they're always hearing each other's in. It always surprises me, though, when they'll slip in with the, no, I didn't hear that. What did you hear? And it's like a moment of, oh, there it is. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's been one of my biggest challenges is catching things on audio because we'll hear things and then the audio doesn't catch it because we'll have a boom mic that's nearby. We try because you have to keep things away from the equipment because if you have any of this electronics near your K2 meter or near your REM pods or any of this, it's going to set it off and then you're getting false evidence. And that's one thing is we want to keep everything authentic. So we're keeping the boom mic like like this, holding it above and trying not to get too close. And then something happens like 10 feet behind us. We like, we heard that. So we're going, what was that? And then no one else is hearing that. So I'm like, how, how do we do this? Like we need to set up like tons of microphones and cameras. And then I look at my bank account and go, no, we're good. We're good. We're just going to have to have people. <laughs> right. Talk. Yeah. Cause those, those systems, man, they, they can run pretty pricey. And so, I'm curious, what what is your team's like most used to like you bought because you thought you would use it and you ended up not really using it kind of equipment? I think the spirit box was I had the SB7. And if you know the SB7 with the little spirit box, that was the one that the the temperature part of it keeps going off and going ee and don't driving me crazy. So I'd end up not using that as much as I normally would and turning it off. And then when I got, so I thought I would just solve all my problems and get the SV11. I have only used that at home once. So, and that was expensive. I was waiting for that sucker to go on sale. I'm like, I'm ready to get on this mailing list and go stop and go, come on, when's it on sale? You know, ready to get the, the SV11. Right. They said it cuts down on the noise, and I honestly find that the SB7 is just better. I don't know how that happens, but the SB7 has worked better for me than the SB11. So, like I said, maybe it's even user error. I wouldn't even mind doing a podcast with someone coming in and teaching me and teaching the audience how to use it better so that – because it's got to be user error. Because I've seen other people who said that, but I've also heard investigators say the SB7 is better. So it's just kind of a toss of the coin there. Yeah, I think it all comes down to personal preference. And for me, you know, talking about Ghost Stop, for me, the piece of equipment I bought that I now rarely use was the motion puck. Because yes. I realized you had to have a camera on it 24-7. Yep. Otherwise, you don't know when this thing's going off and where it's going, what caused it to go off. Then you'll be saying, what was that? And you'll be looking around like, oh, man. <laughs> So, yeah, and it's um, the spirit boxes to me, I, I know a lot of people can deal with the static noise and hear over the static. To me, I just hear the static. It's like people go, oh, did you hear this or that? I'm like, I just heard static. Right. I, I, I don't know how people differentiate the static from the <laughs> Right. I, I did a TikTok doing one of those. I did a TikTok when I first got the SB7. And it, when I was sitting there, I couldn't differentiate a lot of it. But when I went back on the replay, you could hear it clearly. And especially with some of those, if you slow it down, like we filmed at Hotel Icon. And originally, th we thought we got nothing from the spirit box. So we're kind of sitting there disappointed and we turned it off. And I'm sitting there we're reviewing the evidence and we slowed it down and you're hearing clear communication between the static. And I went, Oh my goodness. And I was like, Oh, we should have kept doing it. And so I'm frustrated with myself that I didn't pursue, but I'm kind of like you. It's a lot of times with the static. I'm not, I'm not catching on until I review evidence. So, so if you ever try it again, just try recording and asking questions record yourself and then go back and see if you can slow it down and hear some of the things. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I just, I, I'm not techy enough to even know how to slow down audio. It's like, I, I do good enough to figure out how to trim it. Right. <laughs> to where I could put it on like TikTok or 
make like a short video for YouTube so I don't bore the audience with the four hours of sitting oh. for <laughs> three minutes of, oh my God, activity. <laughs> If people only knew of how long you have to ghost hunt sometimes to get any activity, I mean, it is a game of patience. It's totally a game of patience. I'm, I'm also curious because beyond the game of patience is also the game of trusting yourself. Has there ever been moments where like you heard something or you felt like someone tucked your shirt or something and you're like, I'm not going to say anything because I, I don't think anybody else heard or felt that. So I'm just going to stay quiet. Or do you sit there and go, oh, my gosh, somebody just did this. Or did you all hear that? Oh, man. I, if I if I were to tell everybody everything I sensed or felt, I'd never stop talking. <laughs> and then <laughs> and I'm sure they say I talk enough as it is. So, <laughs> But definitely being a medium, um, when I approach things. I'm already getting information a lot of times and other times it'll stay quiet. Like they're almost trying to examine me just as I examine them. And it's like, there's a dialogue inside of my head of communicating with whatever spirit is there, letting them know we're coming in, pre pre preparing the spirits, preparing anything that's around and kind of getting a gauge. If there's something dark in there, do I want to go in there? And then putting up my shields as well. So I've definitely had times where we were, it wasn't on the professional investigation. It was on Wonderlick Farms when I initially was just scoping it out to see if I wanted to put it for season two. And sure enough that I felt something run up my back and it was no one around me because I'm sitting on the floor and it goes straight up my back. And my first thought was, if that was a cockroach, I'm going to scream. <laughs> <laughs> like people are gonna see me scream and then they're gonna scream. We're all gonna run out of here, and this will be hilarious because at Wonderlick Farm, like I think he was going live with the investigation. So I was like, don't scream, don't scream, don't scream, don't scream. <laughs> so I didn't say anything, and then I waited till a little later and I said, Yeah, something touched my back. And then he looked at me and I said, dude, I thought it was a roach. Leave me alone. <laughs> You know, I, I'm just picturing half the people in the audience are probably going, I would rather the roach run up my back than <laughs> invisible fingers running up my back. I would much rather the invisible fingers because roaches are right there. It's like, I, oh, that's where I draw the line, roaches. And, and I'm not terrified of spiders, but I don't want them on me. Like if I see a spider right now, I don't go over and kill it. Usually we train, we're, we're softies. I'll transport outside and go, okay, you have to live to cockroach. I'm like, all bets are off. You're a trespasser and now you must die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how you're definitive. You're like, you must die. Not a, you're going to die. Okay, it's yeah, a, you must. hundred percent, hundred percent execution style, especially leave his body there on a little toothpick. So the other roaches know, don't come here. <laughs> Wow, she's getting all Dracula style now. I did that with a wasp one year because it's it stung my daughter. So she was so upset thinking that there was always going to be a wasp that came after us. She's autistic. So when there's a stimulus that's negative, they think that stimulus will keep repeating in a negative way. So what I did was I said, don't worry, I've got you covered. And I put that wasp on a little, little stick and stuck it in between the pieces of wood. And I said, they'll never come here now. And sure enough, they really didn't. So maybe there's something to it, like a scarecrow. <laughs> I mean, they put scarecrows and the crows don't come. So that's true. So maybe it worked. I mean, but she was so happy. Like her, she was smiling and she's like, ha, see that when she walked next to it. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm raising a child that's way too similar to me. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good thing. <laughs> I was just about to say, do you take her on investigations with you? I haven't yet. Uh, Amy from SPI has let me know that there are a lot of dangers if people are not trained to go on to investigations, that she needs to start with haunted tours, which she's done. She needs training. She needs education. And and being so so young and being autistic that a lot of times from what she's told me that they might target her, something dark may see that as a weakness and may target her. And it's one of those that I 
I don't know what to think of that yet, but she has said she wants to come on investigation. So probably by season two, once that she gets a lot more training, a lot more experience, then I'll probably take her at least on one and see how she does because she doesn't get scared by much. I mean, she's a lot like me that, I mean, she's more scared of cockroaches and that's it. I mean, everything else she's sitting there. If she found a snake, she's picking it up, walking with it. Like as a kid, she had no fear of anything. I raised her to be brave. Oh, that's not a bad thing. And I gotta say, I, I agree with the, you know, careful where you, you know, take people to, and that there are some things that, you know, are difficult to deal with. But at the same time, though, I always crack up when I hear people say, oh, I'm going to wait until we get to a lightly haunted location and that'll be my introduction. And I'm like, What's you do haunted? realize there really aren't any lightly haunted because some of the things may not be there that day and then when you come back saying oh yeah this 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 will be easy and light and <laughs> who was missing that day is going to be there and they're going to be like oh i'm going to make you eat those words right lightly haunted i'm like what is lightly haunted like suddenly spirits go oh this is it's kind of like they say the quiet zone in the hospital there, there's always something going on. I don't, I don't, no. there, there's no lightly haunted <laughs> Uh, I'm curious, are you one of those that likes to go into cemeteries and check them out, or are you like, nope, let the dead rest? 100% since I was this high, you know, and then I never grew, but that's, <laughs> I'm five too, I'm sure. No, we, I was, um, so interesting story. My family has property that we go hunting, and we've had that property for many, many, many years up in the Centerville, Buffalo area. And there is a burial ground there that you have to walk to. Now you can either cut through the woods to get to it, or you can walk down the road. And since I was little, we always, every time that we went up there during deer hunting season, we walked to the cemetery and we had our flashlights, we explored. And then sure enough, my uncle was always lurking in the bushes with a mask, ready to leap out. I mean, he would go so far as to bury himself on the path with leaves and jump out and get you. Like you didn't know when it was going to happen. And people would be screaming through the woods in the middle of the night. So this is how I grew up. This is why I'm here ghost hunting, all this, this young childhood trauma. But I would laugh. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And especially how else are you supposed to learn about history? You know, when you're a little bitty kid, we didn't have YouTube like this. We didn't have, you know, anything but our history books. So me, I'm looking at grades going, oh, that's interesting. And oh, that's, that's pretty cool. And, and learning about that. So that's part of how I grew up in cemeteries. And sure enough, I started becoming the one scaring the family members on the trip. <laughs> So a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I like cemeteries. To me, it's where I feel, and, and that's going to sound really strange. I'm not gothic by any means, even though I'm wearing black hair. It's, I feel cemeteries are peaceful. That's the one place when I investigate, I feel like it's peaceful. I don't feel a whole lot of bad energy. I really feel like they're resting. And not to say some, some cemeteries may not have some energy because Martha's Chapel Cemetery, Demon's Road, has some negative stuff there. And that's because people are conjuring things. Not because the cemetery is bad. It's the people that, that come there. I'm definitely more fearful of the living than I am the dead. Right. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious. Do you Are you one of those that when you're investigating and... I don't mean this in a negative way towards any groups or anything, but are you one of those that does rituals to raise the energy and bring up energy so you're like, so spirit can come forward? Or do you just go in and you're like, what happens, happens. We're not messing with what's living here. Usually I kind of just go in. I talk to them beforehand, usually a day before I'm usually communicating with spirits, letting them know we're coming. We're going to be respectful. If anyone wants to talk, this is going to be your day to do so. 
Um, a lot of other paranormal teams will do their stuff the day before as well, from what I've seen, and even the week before, depending on what kind of cases they take on. And with us, I do the day before. And when I go in, it's kind of, okay, well, I'm here. And they're either going to talk to me or not talk to me. You know, in my head, I'm saying prayers sometimes if I feel like something's going to be dark or negative, but I say only positive energy. And then there are times I say they can use my energy if they need to communicate. But I haven't developed any rituals so far. Um, I know that does work for some people. And, and maybe in the future, if that's something that, you know, helps the spirits or gets more activity, that that's something I'd be open to for sure. Yeah, I, I would just be cautious about saying to spirit, use my energy. Right. Because I'll be honest, doing Reiki, even the number one rule we're taught with Reiki is don't use your own energy. Right. Let it flow through you. The universe has plenty. So you might want to rethink when yeah. you're going to a location going, hey, guys, I got full battery. Let's go. <laughs> hey, if they're not draining me, they're draining my actual batteries. And then I'm really in trouble, <laughs> which we've had. We had an entire episode wiped out. Like we went to Demon's Road initially. The whole thing got wiped out. We went home. They wiped our cards. They wiped everything. Nothing would come out of those cameras. And I even took my cell phone and stood back when they were filming at some point because, you know, we try to. We're usually in teams and split off different places so that we can gather the energy and it's better for time. But when we had finished up early, I walked up and I videoed that camera videoing. So I thought, oh, this will be neat to, to show people on TikTok and social media what we're doing. Oh, we're filming and I'll show them. And I'm, I'm far enough back to not interfere with anything. So I proved that it wasn't a user error. The camera was recording and then two other cameras are recording. So the, what are the odds of all of the cameras, everything wiped, every card, everything. One, one camera, one card I get, not the whole thing. And I, I, I'm telling you, when I say I cried, I cried, I screamed. I was so mad because I'm like, look, I was like, I told y'all you could use my energy and you just took my cameras and my stuff. So I was so so frustrated but at the same time maybe they were just using the energy or maybe they just didn't want to be seen and I, and I have to respect that I mean there's people if you're filming with your phone that may not want to be seen so maybe it's the same in the spirit world I, I would venture to say so because it is rather unique that they would wipe the card in the camera because mm -hmm. I wouldn't even know how to do that without mistakenly. And you can't even mistakenly do that because it's like a multi-step process to delete what's on the card unless you go to format. But even that is like a step or two. So it's not like you just accidentally bumped a, a button and you're like, oh, no, I just deleted everything. Right. And they've done it more than once. They've done it on like a one camera and one card. So with that, I'm going, huh, because I was sitting there thinking what's wrong with my equipment. I mean, I emailed Ghost Stop. I was going, is this even possible? And they go, do you know how often we get that? I went, really? And they go, oh, yeah. They're like, you're, you're going to learn real quick in the spirit world. And with trying to film, especially with a ghost hunting show, is that if ghosts don't want to be seen, they will find a way to not be seen. And it's like, oh, and I'm like, man. It's like I heard of these stories, but I, it's one of those you always think it's not going to happen to you. You're like, that won't happen to me. It's like uh, they they taught me really quick. So I'm um, kind of curious to backtrack a little bit. Is you know you you mentioned being a medium, and I did catch that that didn't go over my head. I was just going with the conversation. And so I want to take a moment back and I'm curious, did your mediumship develop as a child growing up or did it really start when you started paranormal investigating and you realized, Oh, I can make contact mm -hmm. with the spirits and all of that. So how, how did your mediumship begin? Uh, mine began when I was very little. So I didn't know what a medium was, though. So it, it took many, 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 many years for 
television shows and books and different things to explain what it was because I just thought I was a weirdo. And I, that was kind of my nickname is, you know, kids didn't want to play with me because, oh, you're weird. You're weird. You're, you're talking to ghosts. You're talking to spirits. I mean, my mom even thought maybe there's something wrong with me, but she also has visions. Like she doesn't like hear spirits speak to her, but when things happen, that she actually will have visions. And then the, the thing that she had the vision of will come to fruition the next day. So it's one of those that it's not something of, oh, I'm reliving my day. And then my grandmother on my father's side was a, a me, like she had gifts and abilities from what I was told. And we never discussed that. I did not know that till she passed away, which makes me very sad that my family goes, oh, you didn't know that she had those gifts? Of, what? And then on... My mother's father, oh my gosh, his was off the chart. And we never discussed it either. We just knew that if you got him a birthday present, he could tell you what's in the box, no matter what you got. Like we could have put, like, I could have put this coffee cup and thrown it into a box and not even told him. And he's like, yeah, that's a coffee cup. And it's this color and it's this. And you're like, what? So we got him a birdhouse one year. I said, no way he's going to know. He can't shake the box. He can't figure it out. And he, on point, describing the what was in the box and everything. I said, wow. Still didn't know what a medium was. As I grew up, you know, I like I said, I went and had a mental health evaluation because I thought that's not normal. Because on one of the test questions they do ask is, do you hear voices? And I'm like, I was so scared to check that box going, Oh, well, it's off to the loony bin for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I know, right? But then when people sit and talk to me, that I can hear things that the spirits tell me about them that no one else knows. And it happens so much that people just, they finally stop doubting me. They go, oh, my God. And sometimes it really scares people. And I never mean for that. But if a spirit is standing there, they're practically yelling it at me. No, it's always something very specific. So I'm not sitting there going, you're going to have great luck. Like, no, like I see the letter D in your future. It's like, that could mean a lot of things. Like, yeah. I, I mean, really, like I've seen people, I've seen charlatans do that. And it frustrates me for people who really are mediums because then people don't trust us. But I've had people with, even on TikTok live, that there was somebody that, they ratted me out. They said, oh, ask her. She's a medium. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm just here to watch ghost hunting. I don't want to read anybody right now. And then sure enough, I said, OK, just give me a second to tap in. I was like, I, I can't just wham, wham, wham. I'm not like a trained performer here, like doing cartwheels. So I sat there. I waited for the information to come to me. And it was very specific and different. It was the word polka dots over and over and over. And it was like, she wants you to tell them about the polka dots. And I could see this woman and she started to come into my vision. And I said, okay, I want you to tell me about this woman. And I described her and I said, and tell me what is the deal with polka dots? Like she's obsessed. And he goes, that's my mother. That's who I wanted you to tap into. And she was obsessed with polka dots. Everything she had was polka dots. And I was like, there you go. <laughs> so, so that's kind of that's kind of how that goes for me. A lot of times I had um, a podcast I was on yesterday that um, we talked for a little bit after the podcast was over because there were some private things he wanted to discuss that was off air and, and media, um, mediumship with readings are very private a lot of times. And I was able to see certain things that he goes, holy crap. And I was like, I tried to tell you, it's like, I'm not just making this up. This is not for attention. I said, I kind of run from it. Even as a child, it scared me because it's not normal to see people that are not living and to hear these voices. You really do think you're crazy. There was, there's, there was no Long Island medium. There was no Matt Frazier. There was no one to tell me that this was a gift and not a curse. Right. I was going to say, growing, growing up in Texas, if you mentioned, yeah, I, I hear voices that aren't coming from anyone. There is nobody really that's going to like stand up and go, oh, you hear that too? <laughs> it's more <laughs> likely you're going to find the person that's like, um, yeah, I'm going to go step over here. You stay here. 
It will be just fine. It's like, boom, Bible on the side of the head. Sorry, sorry, I hear nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have a whole lot of friends when I was little. I had uh, maybe three or four very close friends that didn't make me feel weird about it. And they also saw some of the things that I would see because I tried to tell them that, I'm like, all right. It's like, it's not the house that's haunted. It's me. But, you know, my house is kind of haunted. And then people would see a woman walk by and they would think that it was my mother. And I'm like, yeah, my mom's in bed. And they're like, oh, and then they go tell their mom and never stay with me again. And it's like, oh, it's like, I'm like, dang it. Could you not have walked by it another time? You know, <laughs> that or I'd be thinking, huh, I'm not sure if I like this person and, you know, if I should. So do you guys mind doing a walk by and we'll see how he handles it? <laughs> Be like, save me some time, you know? Oh, yeah. We used to put handprints on the mirror and then other handprints would appear. And that was one thing that scared people. I was like, you want to see something cool? Like, I thought all this stuff was kind of neat at first because I was like, oh, these things don't happen to everybody. They'll love me. It's like I can almost pull magic tricks, but it's not me. It's spirits doing this stuff. And they would see it and then they would go tell their parents that I practice witchcraft. And then I'm like, what did I do that was witchcraft? I was like, I, I, I didn't make those other handprints come up there. And I would just, oh, my God, I would cry myself to sleep and just go, I have no friends. And mom goes, well, you're a weirdo. You know, that's, that's my level of comfort from my mom. It's like, sorry, you're kind of a weird kid. <laughs> yeah. And what's, what's funny about that is... Um... In October, we do Texas Scaregrounds is a haunted house. And when it's not running as a haunted house the rest of the year, you can paranormal investigate the location because it is haunted. But one of the signs that the lady, her name is Shauna Anderson, mm -hmm. put up is she goes, these weirdos are my tribe. I was oh. like, I saw that. I was like. I finally have a home. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. I'm telling you. I mean, you got you got to find people with similar interests. That's why when I did start the the ghost hunting show, you know, the the girls, the models that came in were interested in it. So then it made me feel like, oh, like models can be anybody could be interested in this. And then they told me about their own experiences. And so by going on the show, it's helped them conquer some of their fears. And then with having professionals come in and then tell me you're not alone, you're not crazy. You know, they even have um, Lynette on the show. She's also a medium. And so she was basically, it's kind of like I found someone with the same gifts and I go, oh my God, you, you, we're hearing the same things on investigations. So it's finally someone I go, do you see that over there? She's like, yep. And so we'll start like back and forth, kind of checking each other. I go seven years old. She'll go blonde hair and I'm like black shoes. And she goes, is she smiling right now? And then we go, oh, crap. <laughs> Ghost kids scare the crap out of me, especially your intro. I'm going, oh, like, I'm trying not to do this with the ghost kids. Yeah. Spirit kids are, are unique because half the time they are legitimately spirit kids. And half the time it's something else that's like, oh, they'll they'll grab it, they'll let me hang out because I'm a kid. I'm like, whoa. It's like, no, you're not. I'm like, oh, all I think about is Chucky. I think about that that look. <laughs> now they've got new Chucky. I'm like, what is this? I saw the preview and I went, the doll is scarier when you're not sitting there animating the whole thing. I'm like this. I'm not watching this. I was like, I, I'm going back to the OG Chucky where they did his face and it's creepy. Bride of Chucky was just great because it was just, oh, my God. I, know, I was like, Chucky was doing so good that he actually got a woman. Right. I was like, man, he's got himself a lady. I loved it because I loved her look, too. I was like, oh, yeah. loved her. I was glad they didn't go to the extreme of going, now the child of Chucky. I was like, okay, that, that'd be too far. Oh, my gosh. That would not shock. See, now that you said that, someone's going to hear this, and they're like, that's a great idea, and we're going to have child of Chucky. Never should have said that. <laughs> child of Chucky. <laughs> Chucky's kid. 
<laughs> well, it watch it be like um, what was oh the monsters where it'll be the normal one. Yes. So they'll be like Chucky's like trying to turn them sadistic, and he's like, "But Dad, why?" <laughs> He'll like, come out, he won't even have red hair. <laughs> It'll be like all normal, like cabbage patch looking. Right. Oh man. I was like, they're ruining all these these scary movies. I did see the Pope's Exorcist, though. That was, I'll admit that was pretty good. Because I don't normally sit and watch a lot of horror because some of the focus on horror I feel is like gore. And I don't like a lot of gore. Like life is already so traumatic as it is with, I mean, we live in Houston. People shoot each other all the time. Like we have, I think just about, if not already surpassed Chicago with the murder rate. So I'm like, I don't want to see gore. What I want to see is stuff that's going to make me think and things that are really cool. So the Pope's exorcist was really neat because that kid, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but man, Two seconds into the show, that kid's in the back seat. I said, oh, he's about to get possessed. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I ha, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters, and I'm waiting it to, for it to come on TV. Mm -hmm. But I did have the unique opportunity of, on one of my shows, had an actual exorcist on. And he said that movie is the closest to factual a movie has ever been wow of what they do yeah. and i was like are you serious he's like that movie's legit man and i was like man if an exorcist is saying this movie is legit it's like that's scary <laughs> i've been i had an exorcist that reached out and found me recently so we are in talks currently so currently and, and i had to research him because at first i had just seen the pope's exorcist so I'm going, I look on my LinkedIn of all places and I'm like, that's an exorcist. I went, am I being punked? I was like, is this somebody with a fake profile? They're messing with me right now. Cause I had just said, I want to talk to an exorcist and, and get more stories because uh, Amy from SPI on our show, she has performed exorcisms. So she has given me some of the background of what happens. And, and even on my podcast went through what they dealt with. But a lot of those are such very private cases. And this guy like reached out to me and then I was on a podcast, you know, a couple of days ago. And then we know the same exorcist. I went, are you kidding me? It's like, what is happening? It's like, I got to call this guy back and have a conversation. But it terrifies me. It's the one thing besides ghost kids that absolutely terrifies me is the exorcism stuff. So if you've seen all this stuff. I, did you have you seen an exorcism yet? Have you witnessed all that? I, I will say I have not seen one in this lifetime, but I have seen them. Oh man! So what does it do to your psyche? Because people said it messes you up. Like people will quit their jobs. People will move. It's like, man. Like I've heard it's intense. From what I what I recall, oh, it is. It's like you're like all bets are off. You're like, Man. am I even gonna come out of this? At sometimes, it's like, yeah, it, it definitely is something that if you're one of those people that's like, you could drop a UFO in my lap, and I still will tell you there's no UFOs. Those people after this are gonna be like checking themselves into somewhere because their entire reality will be shattered. See, that's my husband. He doesn't like, even with all the ghosts he's seen and all the paranormal things he's seen, he was always open, but skeptical, like, which I really need on my show, especially because he, you know, he's with a camera and he's going, no, that's a car that passed by. That's this. He, he debunks even on the spot, which I definitely need. And He's not scared of much. He was an EMT firefighter, so nothing faces him. And I finally told him, I said, what would actually scare you? Because nothing scares you. Like we heard jail cells slam. If you've seen our first episode, you can hear them go and they're heavy. You can't just like, oh, it closes. You have to physically get somebody to try to push it close. He hears that and he goes, that's interesting. 
And he said, if an exorcism I believed was real, I think it would scare me, like maybe a little. And I said, I want him to at least see footage or witness that because I think, I don't know why, like, I feel like he needs to see it. So I'm like, what do you mean it's not real? You might want to caution yourself on that one. <laughs> you may not like the flip side of what you get after that. Hey, maybe, maybe, you'll, hey, we ended up going to a church in San Antonio and I'm not even like I'm spiritual, but I don't have like a set religion that I follow. So I'm very open to all different beliefs. And when we went to a Catholic church in San Antonio, it's like I attended a, a Spanish Catholic mass. <laughs> and my husband's just sitting there shaking his head. He goes, are you going in there? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh my gosh. And I was like, hey, 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 I can use all the Jesus that I need and all the prayers that I can get in this place. <laughs> and he's like, wow. Like I even asked people's permission when I was there. I was like, can I come in here? Can I pray here? You know, it's like, I don't know who I'm praying to, but can I pray to somebody? And just people were just so nice, so welcoming. I mean, people were there in shorts and, and Crocs. I mean, they didn't even care how you came dressed. They were like, oh, no shoes, no problem. Jesus didn't wear shoes. Look over there at that statue. And I was like, he didn't wear shoes. I was like, I thought he at least had sandals, though. <laughs> so well, that depends, you know. He might have thrown them at the people in the temple selling their wares. So, you know, he might not have got them back. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> it's a really neat place. Like the San Fernando Chapel is supposedly haunted. And so um, I'm going to go back and put my footage together and put that on TikTok as well. With my, it'll be my editing skills, so it's not going to look as cool as my my husband does our show. So I hope people don't look at my TikTok and go, "That's not like the show," because yeah. his editing far surpasses mine. I'm usually on my cell phone putting pieces together, putting music together, trying to figure out like how things flow. Like there's a lot of psychology that goes into it, and I love history. History fascinates me, and haunted history is my favorite thing. Well, being in Houston by Galveston, you are pretty much in the hotbed of history. And I'm curious, how far north in Texas do you go? So I'll go anywhere. If, if we had the funds, I'll go. Is I will travel anywhere in the United States. I'll fly. I'll go anywhere if we have the funds. That's been our only challenge we've hit. So we've gone over to San Antonio. We're hitting up Yorktown in January because I was not going to do Yorktown because everyone seems to have done it. And every paranormal team I've met goes, oh, no, 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 you can't skip Yorktown. They go, it's a rite of passage. You're going to Yorktown. So I had a spirit session and I had my cat balls. I had my REM pod and I didn't get any activity, so I thought, oh, no one wants to talk to me. I forget that they're on. My husband walks upstairs into my little office, my little serene, quiet area, and he goes, so have you thought about going to Yorktown? And I was like, I'm not going. And then everything goes off. Every cat ball and the rim pod all went off. And I said, I guess I'm going. <laughs> and he goes, see, even they told you. And then he walks away. None of it phases him. Like, we tons of activity and he just walks away. He's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been there five times and what? Five yeah, times? five times and it, it's hard for me because it's like a six hour drive from where I live because I live near Dallas. Oh wow. And so yeah, I gotta drive down to Austin and San it just north of San Antonio to veer off towards your town and I didn't realize the first few times when I was at your town it's like being a history major it's funny how the mind works is I'm like I go to Yorktown and I'm like I'm passing signs for like Goliath and Gonzalez and I'm like okay and then it's like I sit down and I'm like wait a minute I just passed signs for Goliath and Gonzalez right and so finally on my fourth and fifth trip, I was like, I'm going to Goliad and Gonzales and checking these places out. Because I'm like, how, how did I miss these places? Right. right. So what was Yorktown like for you? Because you got to prep me because we're we're going to have the whole crew. We've got all the beauties, SPI. We've got uh, we're bringing in people to help us with equipment and film. So I've got to prep the newbies when they come in as well. 
So one thing I will foretell is if it's been raining recently, you're going to want to wear boots or wet shoes because some areas will flood. Oh, man, that sucks. And there is a jail cell that is controversial in the basement because oh. some say it's original and some say it was added sometime okay. later. And I'm getting more proof that it was added later, but it still served a purpose. Oh. And I've had cat balls go off to the cell. Huh. So not sure why it's there, but it's there. And there is a wall in the basement level that is being held up by a single board. Huh. So you, you want to be a little cautious down there, but people sign their names on the walls down there. Oh, I can see it crashing on me. Like, that'd be great for the episode. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'll never ask that to work out again. Be like, we'll just move this board so I can sign here because there was their space. It'd be like, oops. <laughs> That's going on my tombstone for the next episode. Angela haunts the show, going, We shouldn't have done that. And that's on my gravestone. <laughs> Rushed to Yorktown. <laughs> Who would have thought that board was really working? <laughs> right. I'm like, at least someone make up a cool story about me to say that something leaped from the wall and attacked me and dragged my soul somewhere. Like, make it cool. Like, don't just say yeah. that she was dumb trying to sign something and the wall fell on her. <laughs> no, but um, the funny thing is you used to be able to walk on the roof of the building, but now they ask you not to. Because yeah. I think that the age, but so the uniqueness of Yorktown is its layout. So you walk up these stairs and to your left will be stairwells going down to the bottom level. And you can walk down a hallway and come up the back way. But the back way is the only stairwell that'll go to the con considered the third level fourth level if you count the basement fourth level but Man. and that's a small little room uh, it's kind of interesting and Is there anything in that room you know i've had some uncomfortable feelings in there and i mean when i say small room it's like if you were to put a bed in there that bed would eat up the entire space of that room oh wow it is small Man, forget and I'm that. not talking king size. I'm meaning like twin, if you're lucky. <laughs> wow. Oof. Man, but, nope. yeah. that's probably going to be a room I avoid. <laughs> <laughs> but, that uh, or, yeah. I'll be not signing the yeah, And the chapel in there. Yeah, I, I had a unique experience because I wasn't. Because I, I, it's like my mind gets fuzzy on like, you know, with so many investigations, what was said, what wasn't said. Right. But I, I feel like it might have been said, but maybe not to the spirits. You know, they might have overheard. But I, so I have a reverence license. Oh, very nice. And when I was first there with the team, we were on the balcony and they're like, oh, there's a reverend here. And they're all like going, who are they talking about? And I, I'm, I wasn't even in the area right yet. And then I walked in a little bit later and they're like, Oh, we gotta stop talking because of the reverend. And I'm like, what? What? And they're like, they knew you were coming. I was like, who knew? What are you talking about? Wow. How many people did you have with you? I think at that time it was two separate teams, and so I think it was one team of like five. I think if I'm remembering right, and the team I started with, which mm -hmm. I think it was like four of us, and. <laughs> It, it was an interesting first. That was my first investigation, actually. Re so you team. went hardcore. You, you weren't holding back. You're like, you know, this place is like demonic at that first place. First place. Right away. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going here. And that chapel is legit. There, There is some definite weird energy in that chapel. Because that's where I'm drawn to. I think that whenever we look around and investigate, I want I want to investigate the chapel. Like I want to do some kind of uh, homage to Zach Bagans because he was gonna he ripped off his shirt in there. 
So I, I want to act like that. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe <laughs> and see and see if I, if people get my reference and see what I'm doing, <laughs> which if they're watching this, then they'll know what I'm doing when I do that. And no, so actually I, 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 I was laughing thinking your viewership's going to go up. Right. And it's the probably wrong. not the paranormal fans are going to be like watching going, Oh my God, she's going to do this. And it's like, um, no, that's not the point of the experiment. Yes, no. And you were not paying attention to what was going on. Right. Because <laughs> the interesting part is, see, I have tattoos uh, on my neck and my back and my shoulders. So that's whenever he, he said, you're not going to like this tattoo. I'm sitting there going, oh, I hope they like my tattoo. <laughs> I don't want to make them mad. I don't want to go in and aggravate and make anyone mad. I hope they're okay with me being there and they don't try to scratch me. And if they do, at least let's catch it on camera. Well, from what I recall is not only do the nuns not like um, tattoos, but they especially don't like them on females. Oh, crap. So <laughs> You're like gonna be like the coup de grace of them of going. Oh, if anyone's gonna ramp us up, here she comes. <laughs> Man, oh, that's why I said that, that. If they see my tattoos, I'm done for. I'm not gonna hide them because I know they're gonna see them. So I'll be like, you know, but it's gonna be January and cold. So maybe I'll have like a scarf. We'll go with a scarf <laughs> <laughs> and a cross under my scarf that I'm gonna be holding on to. <laughs> In no, hotel but, icon, I was holding on to that cross for dear life. Like I, you can see, I asked my husband to edit that scene out, and he's dying laughing, going, "Nope," because you see me like trying to go. Which way does it go? Like I, I, I'm like, oh, I was like, I'd be a terrible Catholic. I don't know which direction. I was like, either way. And the thing he didn't capture on camera because we were just, I, we were exhausted. We had been there for since. I think lunchtime all the way till it was three and four in the morning till when everyone left. And then it was till six in the morning. So we didn't stop going. And I was, I was convinced he was possessed because he was getting mean. And I was like, so I would put the cross up and go, I was like, do you worship Satan? And he's like, look, no. And I was like, see, he growled. <laughs> and I'm just walking around with that cross, looking at people going, are you sure you're not possessed? <laughs> and then I'm holding it around the corner. Every corner I went to, I stuck the cross out before I crossed in. And the ladies are just dying laughing. And I said, look, I'm tired. I'm scared. And I don't think this is in here. <laughs> Sorry. Something outside just caught my dog's attention. And they were like, we're going full throttle through the full door. Throttle. I have two. I have two Frenchies. So I've got my husband watching them now. Otherwise... My dog will be up here barking. I've got a cat that usually makes an appearance. And all you'll see is his tail. And I have to tell people, I do not have a tail. It's a cat. I swear <laughs> to God. Across the sure, sure. That, that, that's where that mediumship comes from is that tail. A tail. <laughs> oh, it was kind of interesting. I was talking with someone talking about like tails and everything is that we have tail bones. And what our shoulder blades look like we had wings at some point. And so it's like, I really sit there and think sometimes, you know, are, are we more human or are we like de-evolved humans? Like we lost some of our stuff okay. because why do we have tail bones and like wing bones with we don't have tails or wings? Yep, and useless appendixes that don't work for crap. I mean, gallbladders go out half the time, too. I think they're phasing out. Like, I don't know what we're going to be in the next 200 years, but we're phasing out body parts piece by piece. There went the tail. There went the wings. There goes the appendix. And next up is the gallbladder, because everyone I know is losing those, too. I was like, good Lord, what's next? <laughs> uh, so true. <laughs> That so, would be cool if we had wings. Could you imagine the possibilities, the thing, places we could go, the things we could do? Oh, yeah. Could you, could you imagine the cost traffic of, like, over oceans going, hold on, don't, you know, make sure you don't flap too fast because you don't want to wear your wings out. Right. <laughs> There's nowhere to land. 
then we've got parents teaching us how to fly, you know, pushing us off roofs, just like birds do out of the nest. Ah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Parenting on a new level. <laughs> Be like, yeah, we're going 10 stories because we just don't think five is enough to really <laughs> motivate you to, you know, start flapping for your life. Right. <laughs> You're gonna fly or die. So there you go. <laughs> Would be worse is at the last second you're like, oh wait, I got it. Oh, oh dang. all that work and I figured it out at the too late. <laughs> I feel like I'd be like, have you ever seen that movie uh Rio with the bird, the blue bird, Rio? Yes. But you've seen the second one. I'm I'm totally Rio. It's like, well, sorry, <laughs> trying to fly. <laughs> That would be me going, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so what's on your bucket list? Like, do you have a bucket list of, like, Texas versus the U.S. versus international? My, my bucket list is, like, a mile long, but I can tell you my biggest one is I want to go to Scotland or to Ireland into a castle that has some, a castle, a castle that has rich history, something that I know is haunted, and something that maybe even I can connect with my heritage because I have a lot of Sky, uh, Scottish and Irish in my blood. So I feel like that maybe we could stir something up as far as in me, like maybe remembering something or feeling something and connecting to something from my past. Like I think that would be kind of coming full circle to mediumship is connecting with where I came from and, and experiencing that. I think that would be really neat. And then of course, anything in Italy, like I'm Italian as well. So I know my roots come from there as I would like to explore. They seem to preserve a lot of their buildings and history, you know, a lot more than other places do. And I would like to explore there as well. And it depends on which part of Italy you go to. Yeah. I want to go to the old school. I want to go to like the little village where there's like one lady that cooks for everybody. And I'm like, yes, I'll sit at her table. <laughs> I have weird like, goals. We're here. And I'm like, hello, we're probably family. Maybe, right? Oh, yeah, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm hungry. So I'm just saying I'm here. Like, what can I do so that you'll feed me? <laughs> yeah. They like leave with a bunch of recipes and you're like, I'll never find these ingredients where I live. So thank you. <laughs> You're like, thank you. She's like growing it in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's kind of my goal is, is going worldwide one day. Um, Texas is where we're at now due to budget constraints. And the, the team is all from Texas. Well, they're not from Texas, but they're all living in Texas currently. So we all try to stay in close enough proximity. But I mean, I would like to take the show to haunted New Orleans, haunted Vegas, you know, haunted Maine. And like hit up places that are hot spots and explore there for sure. And then take it worldwide. Because if I could do that, then I would be so happy to teach the history. I mean, we don't get to experience a lot of that stuff. I'd like to go to some new places too that no one's been, but that's always risky. Right. And so I'm kind of curious with your niche being more around the show. Do you get offers from other teams or people saying, hey, I have a location. Would you like to investigate with us? Or are you more of, well, because we have the production team in the show, we really can't have other people on the show. Right. That I have had a few offers. Uh, a lot of times since it's all female, sometimes men want to come in and I have to go, oh, it's an all female show. It's like, but if they have a team or a show or even just want me to come out to investigate with them, then absolutely I would go out there and I would guest on their show or, or, or their series and be part of it if they wanted to. But for our show, we keep it with, with all women. And it's usually all pre-planned with production because we have to get permission to go to locations. Uh, we generally have to pay a lot of times to reserve those locations because it takes several days to get some of the extra footage. Like the investigation is just one day. So it's overnight. So you can't, do that but we've even thought about expanding investigations to two nights so that we can give it more time but it's everybody's got such crazy schedules so definitely i'm open to joining other teams to help out and to be on their shows but for our show we have to keep it with the way it is we are interviewing two new girls that want to be on our show so we've got one that's already signed on 
So we are super excited to introduce her at some point and make sure that she's still good to go. And then we have two other ladies that we're talking to that are potential for the future because we would like to see more people coming in and more people experiencing this with us because it's so fun. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got to admit, I feel a little crushed right now because I was like, man, I, I, I have a couple places I'm like, that would be really cool for your team. And it's like, I'm always the one doing the touring and going, right. But if I if you can't do it, it's like, well, that kind of takes the fun out of it. I know, right? That's right. That's that's kind of been the challenge so far. If we had more of grants or donations or a budget, we'd be able to be so much more flexible because we really would like to be able to go to more locations. We've had offers for different places and we just don't have the money to fly the the six people that's on the show, plus anybody that's going to be willing to hold cameras and do this. Then we have to pay for hotel rooms. It's, it's held us back. So we're hoping that eventually maybe the Discovery Channel or Travel Channel or some somebody, even a, an angel investor will come and go, this is cool. And someone can help with us to do those things because we really do want to be more flexible. We really do. Like I, I would love to go to so many places. I mean, I have people send me lists and I go, I want to go so bad. <laughs> It's like, I want to see more things like it's we have so long between tapings and, and investigating that I end up sneaking on ghost tours, like doing my own little investigation. And then somebody will spot me and go, I know who you are. It's, oh, crap. <laughs> I was like, how do you know that our show hasn't launched yet? And now it's launched. So I, I hope that that people will recognize me and and maybe, you know, we'll have adventures together like the Paranormal Fest in San Antonio. That was so fun. There were people investigating the Victoria Black Swan Inn as we sat there. And it was, I didn't have to wait for a film crew. I didn't have to fix myself up too much. And I was just sitting there investigating what I love to do. So I, I really had a blast. I was like, oh, good. No pressure right now. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is, you know how you mentioned Ireland, wanting to go to Ireland? Mm -hmm. I have a really awesome friend who is from ireland and she has a question for you oh very cool she said can i ask what got you into the paranormal that was back to my childhood with spirits talking to me that's where it started because like i said i didn't know if i was crazy or what was going on but i saw ghosts as a kid i could communicate with them i had them even come into my body and use me to communicate to people when we were kids, like I said, kids did not want to be my friends. I was a weirdo, but I didn't know that it was labeled paranormal. I just knew that it was interesting. And it was, I felt like myself when I was doing those things, when I was going places and communicating with spirits, I felt comfortable. So that's kind of got me into the paranormal. And of course, R.L. Stein, the Goosebumps, I'm telling you, I think I had every one of those books. I, thank you so much. That's been, I said, oh, we got another question. We got another question. Let's see, what's been your favorite place to investigate so far? What which is, is, let's see, which is the most place you've seen felt paranormal activity? See, I my, think you were meant to say, which is the most active place you'd seen? Which is the most active place? Oh man, Old Town Spring really is one of the most active places. They have uh, regular ghost tours there. And, and uh, the Wunchy Brothers, the Hanging Tree, those places really are, that's one of the most active places that I've ever been. Um, one of my favorite places was the Old Lavaca County Jail. And I've been there, been there twice now. And I was like, I'm feeling like a regular here. And the ladies there being so welcoming, that's, that was incredible. Like you, you couldn't meet two cooler people. I mean, these people were just like, Oh, come on back. And I mean, you, you feel like you're hanging out with your family. They're just so cool. Yeah. I'm kind of curious because I don't want, I don't like talking about, you know, kids so much because I know a lot of parents are protective and everything. And, but I'm curious, have you 
picked up on or do you sense that maybe she has some gifts that she inherited from you with your family line having so many gifts in it absolutely on our season one episode one that's one of my first stories is with my daughter talking to spirits as a kid and it's interesting because i could put my ear to the door and i could hear the spirit talking to her and it wasn't a voice i recognized because it was my grandmother but i had never met that grandmother that was my mom's mom she passed away uh two or three years before i was born so i guess she was connecting with my daughter and i used to get calls from school from her where she i like put her on the phone and she goes mom these kids won't leave me alone so i'm thinking she's being bullied and she's like no 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 mom not the alive kids the dead kids and i'm like oh my god and so my instinct is not to go there's no dead kids you're talking to that's when you suppress people's gifts and abilities when you doubt them make them doubt themselves so i told her i said here's what you do you tell them i'm at school right now we'll talk another time if you need some help come to me later and i told her i was like if you need them to come talk to me i will help you through that and so she's her gifts and abilities i'm thinking they're going to surpass mine one day if she keeps using them because she sees the shadow people she sees the things that i see and we're on the same page of seeing the same thing without even telling each other it's later on we're like oh yeah you saw that shadow person too i think that's great that you do that and i think that's kind of in a way the goal of every like person who's like teaching in the paranormal is to have their student so to speak student surpass but i think it's rather unique that it's from like your daughter mm -hmm. instead of like a teammate because it's like part i know there's probably a part of you that's like going man if she surpasses me how am i going to be able to help her right <laughs> definitely it hurt i think because i've never suppressed her either with me you know my mother didn't ever necessarily suppress me but she just said i was a weirdo and and hello hi matt <laughs> Like my mother always just said that I was a weirdo. And I think sometimes as a kid, you don't want to be the weird kid. Like I was already a redheaded kid. So I really got picked on <laughs> redheaded kid with freckles, you know, so I got picked on a lot. And then it didn't help when I couldn't see and I had to get the thickest glasses you could possibly imagine on a human being. So then I'm sitting there redheaded, freckles huge thick glasses and i talked to ghosts i mean i didn't stand a chance for being popular or making friends <laughs> i really didn't and look at us now we're becoming the popular ones right there we go Woo <laughs> so jenny is pointing out she says as a woman in the paranormal field and lord knows we have fought and still do for our place in this field i will say paranormal beauty's name will catch the men's attention and not what your investigation research do you have any evidence audio hard evidence to back you up i couldn't agree with you more jenny another thing with the ghost hunting beauties is i figured that some of the females would be captured by that as well because i like the show selling sunset it's because these women just like on selling sunset they look so incredible and they're selling these multi-million dollar homes and and they're doing these incredible things so i'm hoping that a lot of women will catch on to that as well and appreciate that you can still you know you can still fix your hair and makeup and be in heels and go ghost toning if you want to or you can dress down and do it that way too it just gives kind of another field but as far as evidence and everything goes we absolutely have all the evidence to back us up we have the evidence that's on our show which you'll see but i always feel that people will be skeptical around that which they always should but we do have evidence there and on our TikTok channel if you ever hop on there we do TikTok lives to where none of it is produced none of it is is planned half the time uh, we went live at demon's road i think it was friday when the show was airing is that i was like you know what we're here in the cemetery getting the, the rest of the footage, like B-roll footage of here's a grave, here's the woods, capturing the extra things that we couldn't capture before. 
And then I was like, I'm going to go ghost hunting while I'm here by myself. So I went live and I had the REM pod set up. So everyone watched me set up the REM pod. I set up the cat ball so everyone could see I'm setting that up. And it's literally just me and my husband. And sometimes he would put the light on me. Other times he'd run away and I'm in the pitch black with my cat balls. And, and he, you can hear him in the cemetery going, he, 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 in the dark. And I was like, this is my life right now. I'm ghost hunting in the pitch black. And, but people can see the evidence even live. So we hope that a lot of people will tune in and see that we're, we're not just doing things for the show. The show is what started a lot of things, but we're doing things besides the show we're really out there actually investigating different locations and experiencing the paranormal so so i hope that answered your question we've definitely got the evidence to back it up i even i see i know no heels right I, i'm telling you like i had heels and boots in the cemetery the other day and my husband goes well that was dumb and i was like it was dumb and i was like i didn't think i'd be walking around this many hours in heels I don't, bl I don't blame you at all. Like I really, I think that for season two, that I am going to have to bring some tennis shoes or something extra Yorktown. I don't think I'm going to be in heels in Yorktown. I think I'm going to be no. in boots like that are, you said rain boots, if it's been raining or something comfortable. Cause Ooh, I don't yeah. you. No. So, yeah. And talking about Yorktown, the other thing I probably should mention is, Possums are very popular to be hanging out in there. Oh, cool. So, um, and they are very sneaky little devils. And I, I, I remember one time where I was shining a blue flashlight because I like different color lens on my flashlight so I can differentiate if that light source is my flashlight versus a spirit. And I'm scanning, and all of a sudden, it, these two th eyes are looking back at me. And I, I go by, and I'm like, wait. I go back, and I'm like, okay, where did that go? And I'm like, and I'll move, and I realize I moved a little, and I go back, and I'm like, oh, oh my God, there's a possum there. <laughs> oh, if, if I see a possum, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say anything because an none of the animals bother me. I was raised in the country. We had raccoons, possums, stray cats, cows horses i mean chickens we had everything out there none of it bothers me but if i if i see a possum i'm just gonna send the girls to go walking towards it <laughs> so, but if i did hear something the heels are coming off yes jenny for sure like i'm throwing them like i, I have a feeling that in yorktown i'm gonna be throwing my heels down the hall at some point. <laughs> yeah. so the did other thing about oh yeah God. the other thing about yorktown is there is a kid's room and you'll know it when you see it it's full of toys and everything but when i was there i got something in the window i Ooh. cannot explain and oh you got to send that to me so i can look at it oh yeah I, i'll definitely dig that up and i'll send it to you but yeah it it it's like, and I didn't even know it was there. So the story behind that is one of the guest investigators goes, oh, you know, does anybody have photos of this room? And I was like, going, well, yeah, and I'm looking at it. And I was like, wait a minute, what is that? And it's like months later, I'm looking at it going, what is that? Is that that's no that that way what and i'm like zooming in going um oh. yeah i got this and everyone's like oh my oh. god <laughs> see you have to send that to me so i can look at it i have people send me evidence all the time because i like to look through and i can usually tell you that i can usually debunk if it's something that i catch and go oh it must have been this but if i can't explain it i've got people i try to send it to as well that i try to get people other mediums and people to read things in case I can't read it. Cause I mean, nothing's ever for sure. It's one of those that I doubt myself a lot too, especially, you know, I hid my gifts for so many years until the show. And I thought, what do I got to lose at this point? You know, they, they've called me weird my whole life. Well, now the people in my life will know I'm still that weirdo. <laughs> right. So I just noticed we've actually gone over an hour. I've wow. kind of been like, 
I was watching and going, wait, how did we get six, 17 minutes over? Hey, I could talk paranormal all day, all night. <laughs> <laughs> At the rate we're going, we probably will. Right. <laughs> So there are a couple of questions in the chat room, which we've kind of already gone over, yeah. but um, I'll pop them up just to acknowledge them. Um, your favorite ghost hunting tool? Oh, this is the one that you'll hear me say on the show so many times. And I'm just, I don't know if, it, is this a censored, censored show? Do you have to, I always say. I don't have a censored okay. show. <laughs> I always say, I love balls. So cat balls. <laughs> I love the cat balls because they are affordable for anybody. You don't have to go spend a fortune on them. You could have a hundred of those suckers lined up. And if you're not touching them and a spirit touches them, they go off with pretty lights. So, I mean, you've got indisputable evidence. It's if you have it properly set up that cat balls going off is a spirit using its energy. And I've seen people whose cat balls have gone flying which oh i haven't had that happen yet like i want that to happen so bad so every episode i'm like play with my balls so that's kind of my favorite tool <laughs> that's me on the show and then i have to remind myself there are people watching this i'm like well that's me <laughs> and you know it's true and i had at the location we're in right now with the haunted house i had cat balls on concrete ground and on a bed, nobody around them, and they would start to go off. Mm -hmm. And we even had to the point to where we were literally asking a question, and the cat balls going, and the second it stopped, it restarted. What? And then it would stop and restart and stop and restart. It did it four times, went off, and it was like, I have never seen a cat ball continuously go i mean that that was like that blew my mind at that point and i was like yeah these things are legit now that is, this so is undeniable we had that on our tiktok live on friday when we were at uh, demon road in the cemetery as i set one off by the the chapel and i made sure it couldn't roll or do anything else so as i'm talking to the rim pod i mean a ghost just comes by or a spirit goes and goes doo -doo, doo -doo. So this ball was sitting over there by itself. You know, it's in the cemetery. Nobody can touch it. She said that vibration can set it off. Yes, definitely. So if you have equipment or anything, I say make sure it's those cat balls are isolated. This one was isolated over by the chapel. No one's near it. And I'm asking questions. REM pod goes off twice. And it goes, Doo -doo. I was like, can you do that again? And I'm like, like a little kid every time I'm like, oh, and then it goes, Doo -doo, does it again. And then I see my cat ball go off in the distance. And you hear me, you're like, yes, yes. It's like, I love the balls. And then my husband's just over there dying laughing. So before we leave, he puts the cat balls up to the camera and he goes, here you go, TikTok, play with my balls. And then walks off. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, this is supposed to be family friendly. He goes, no, it's not. He's like, we're ghost hunting. He goes, it's you. It's not family friendly. <laughs> I'm yeah. the friend you don't put on speakerphone. I've learned that. People have had to go, my kids are in the car. And I'm like, can you put it on speakerphone with me? That No, no. <laughs> I don't have a filter. You can ask my daughter. I never had the mom filter with her, which I probably should have. But I never censored myself around her. Like, And I was like, well, she she's not going to grow up to curse like a sailor like me and Oh, yeah. I've heard her gaming sometimes. And I go, really? Really? It's like, yeah. oh, sorry. So, Ghost and Getaways, I have investigated with them. And we were actually on a location talking about the REM pods. This is going to blow your mind. Ooh. We put a REM pod by a speaker at the edge of where two halls like do a T. And it was somewhat behind the wall, but you could still see it down the main path to the yeah. to where we were. So we go into this room, and we come out, and we're like, where'd the REM pod go? It was gone? And we were like, didn't we have a REM pod down there? We go, and it was moved over. 
Ooh. They Whoa. moved the REM pod without setting it off. Well, how is that even possible? We, we found out if you tap it with your shoe, it will scoop, but it won't trigger it. Huh. And so we we all heard on audio it sliding on the ground. Oh, wow. That is so But nev- the alarms never went off, and we were like, oh, my God. So that's this a pod pod move. practice on, on <laughs> manipulating things because he's like, I'm not even going to touch this thing. Like, whoops. <laughs> Wow, that is freaky. That would I would really love to capture evidence like that. Like I'm really hoping that, like I said, with season two, that we up our game because we've got more microphones, we've got more cameras, and and I'm I'm really hoping to capture more evidence because that's the whole show is that you know we have our dynamic with the beauties and the SPI girls, but I really love the history. That's the number one thing. And I really want to capture something that nobody's ever captured before. Like that's my hopes is that we capture something, you know, flying across or something happening, you know, if a spirit wants to do that, like not, not flying to hit me in the head because that would be terrible. But, but I really want to show this stuff. I really want people who don't believe in this to, to open their minds and open their hearts to the paranormal that you don't have to be deemed a paranormal type of person. Hence why I have the ghost hunting beauties, which the models, you don't have to, you can be anyone and have paranormal experiences. That's, that's the whole point. I agree. And that is one of the reasons we were like, we were talking backstage is I wanted you guys on the show, your team, especially because I feel like, with the field that we're in now, everyone's going to look at your team name and like, go, Oh, that that's just a TV show and right. move on. And I'm like, no, there's actually a whole lot more to this than you would expect. Like doing the history. When yep. you, when I read that about, you know, you and your team doing that and watching your podcasts and your videos, I was impressed at how much research you actually do into these. And I mean, your format is like, you know, you're like a news anchor just telling the history of this location. And it's like, usually I'm like, eh, you know, news anchor, right. news, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm off. But I'm the ghost hunting Anna White, just going. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> watching and going the history, you know, and as you're saying the history, it's like, wait, what? And it's like, I didn't hear that before when I was there. I was there and I don't remember that. And it's like, you actually kept my attention. Oh, thank you. That's what we're hoping to do because there's, and I, I like to interview people who have been to places like you telling me about your experience at Yorktown, because see, you know, someone had just recently mentioned the basement, but I haven't heard about this jail cell thing. So now I'm prepared for that. So I've definitely, we work with the Houston Historical Society as well, who have now decided to open the doors for us. They have contacted us after finding our show and has said that any historical aspect of Houston or buildings that other people don't have access to, they will grant us access because we definitely focus on the history first because we're, and then we go into education. So it's like history, mystery, education. We really love all those aspects and ghost hunting is the fun part of it. It's exciting. Like every time I go on vacation, I go on the haunted ghost tour. Like I can't resist. Like I'm no offense, but sometimes just hearing about in 1885, this happened, this building went up. Okay. It's like, but in 1887, someone was murdered, and it's like, the hell you say? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, you got my attention. I was like, what just happened? And it's like, next time, lead with that. Right. <laughs> so that's why I know that, that people are interested, because history, if anyone knows, that, like you said, you have an extensive background with history. History is dirty, gritty, secret, so many things. And if I can uncover a lot of that through researching and then spirits, because spirits don't ever hide stuff, you know, generally, 
the spirits are going to be very forthcoming with telling me something. You know, now we know that so and so was murdered here and it was by so and so and we're we're learning things. So kind of like mixing in a little bit of true crime with it as well. Like I have an episode I haven't aired yet and I can't air, but it's um, I'm looking to do a part two into it. And I was considering one of the spirits we contacted was murdered in this place. And I know the person like not personally, God help us. I know who the person is who murdered him. And he, the spirit had a message for him. I would like to go into the prison and deliver that message to him. And I don't know how that's going to go. I have been cautioned against it, but I don't know any ghost hunter that's done it. Because I mean, what if he's given me a message to give to him, I wouldn't mind going to the prison and go, well, I have some questions that weren't brought up in your case and the spirit brought it up for me. You know, we're not in the court right now. Can you tell me what that means and maybe have him clarify some things too? That would be amazing. It's never been. And done. so Anthony Sabellos just joined us. He's with the Wraith Hunters. They're actually out of Houston, or not Houston, San Antonio. Don't hit Very me, cool. Anthony. Exactly. Don't hit me. <laughs> That's cool. Like I said, we had a blast in San Antonio. We've got more places that we're going to put up with haunted history in San Antonio. We are looking forward to coming back to Yorktown, and I'd love to come back and do a whole, I'd love to do a whole season with San Antonio. So one thing I would recommend with you is with your town is with history, because, you know, we're in Texas. Mm -hmm. Not far from your town is cost where the first shots of the Texas Revolution were fired. Oh, wow. And it's an open field on the right. And on the left is a house. So I recommend, you know, staying to the right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can and they have all these placards leading up to the site and like a little flag with the little plaque that says this is where the sh first shots were fired. Whoa. And Gonzalez has a lot of cool little places around. Yeah. But the other one that's close to there is Goliad, which has mm -hmm. um, Bannon's burial site and La Bahia which is, I walked that. I didn't get there in time to go inside, but I oh. walked around, and that was intense. Man. And I, I could feel a intense. lot. You could feel it? Oh, yeah. And being, I mean, I don't have to tell you about our summers, but I was there in summertime. There were little, like, eye holes in the wall. Ooh. You stick your hand in, and it's like, 30 degrees. It's almost like an ice box. Weird. In some of those eye holes. You stuck your fingers in there? I'd be afraid something will bite it. <laughs> well, you could go all the way through. They were like literally like where the riflemen would fire from if you were to attack the fort. Yeah. Or the mission. And I know, you know, concrete cools and yeah. doesn't heat up, but this was a drastic, and it wasn't every okay. single one. So I was like, that that drew my attention. And some of the history that they have up there drew my attention. And so I think that those are a couple of places that you might want to hit up while you're there. Because I don't know if you're like me, where if I'm driving far, I want to yeah. get as many places as I can while I'm out there. Oh, for sure. But I can see my husband now going, nope. <laughs> I go, we got, we got this much time and we got to film. And I've all, that, that's usually him. We're, we're doing three days because the first day should be interviews, like interviewing. So I, I want other people who have these experiences telling the history because I don't want it to just be like my face there telling history. I want them to tell their experiences. Like at the jail, we had the ladies there telling their history and that especially mm -hmm. they go, oh, I could have listened to them for days. Their stories were just fantastic. And we did stop at the Alamo, though, whenever we were looking at everything. And I had a very, very strange experience there, enough that I started crying. And then my husband's looking at me, just shaking his head like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I, was, I couldn't explain to him. It was before we went in, because you can't touch the walls when you go in. Like, you, you can't touch it. But before you go in, there are places that you can touch. And I don't know 
what part it was that I had touched. And I saw a different time and place. I saw everything different. I saw someone with no legs being dragged. And then someone that was, I'm assuming had to be a priest at the time, like dragging that person into the building, like not another soldier, like it was a priest dragging him. And then it's like, I could feel just sadness, sadness, sadness. And like, I just couldn't stop crying. And I was like, oh my God. So then of course I, I wipe my eyes, fix my makeup and, and my husband starts to film. So I said, I want you to film this hallway because there's just something weird here at this spot, like right here. Like that guy was just dragged off and I just couldn't stop crying after that. But it was just heartbreaking when you go to a place that's had battles, like you mentioned, that you feel it. I think that energy stays trapped there. But it was the the um, the priest or whoever it was. Uh, I, I don't know who he was, but I was feeling his sadness. And that's the mm. only way I can explain it is I was experiencing him because I, I was someone else. Right. So knows when that happens, because I, I blink a lot when it happens. He's like, are you OK? Right. And the interesting thing is the title of everyone knows it as the Alamo, but its official title was Mission de Alamo de la Bejar, mm -hmm. I believe. So it was like the mission, the Alamo mission of San Antonio is what it translates to. Mm -hmm. And so people don't realize that I think the Alamo was in uh, San Antonio was the third city in texas mm -hmm. when spain and mexico was running the show and so you probably saw something that even predated the revolution because there were it was a mission so they would have been bringing in people who were sick or injured to help them right and i remember thinking to myself that i was like i'm not hearing any bells though and i was like don't they have a bell? Why am I not hearing bells? That that kept sticking with my head. So I actually found a worker there and asked them. They said they didn't complete it in time for a bell. She goes, so there were no bells being rung. And I went, that makes sense. I said, because why can't I hear a bell? I like my brain is telling me and my logic is telling me that during battle and at missionaries, they usually have bells. And she goes, nope, they didn't complete it in time. I was like, interesting so i was like that makes sense mm -hmm. so it kind of lended to the validity of the experience i was having at the time and it's um it's not a lot of people i tell this stuff to but that's why i said i'm glad that we're here with you know paranormal people that understand and people who are interested in this stuff because otherwise like i said it sounds crazy it's like gee i was a different person like i was an older man i was i had to have been a missionary but i'm seeing this other man dragging this body and it just i couldn't stop crying i mean I've seen a billion war shows and I don't sit and cry the whole time. I mean, this right. is like experiencing what he experienced. So th this will kind of warp your mind a little bit too, is the Alamo we see today isn't the Alamo of the revolution. Right. The facade, that little nice little hump at the top that gives it its defining look Yep, didn't even have it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like people don't realize it's two different color bricks. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the bottom part is the 1860s, or not 1860s, but the 1840s and 30s. And the Union Army and Confederate Army in the Civil War put the front facade on to right. make it look be better. And more formidable and so it's like yeah there's actually uh two different wars that building has gone through exactly that's why i really usually to channel things i i usually i channel a lot through touch and and i was i needed to touch something there and i was sitting there thinking you know like i said i doubt myself a lot of times and i'm like i'm not gonna get anything and i'm telling you i was gone when i touched that one portion and it wasn't like the main building because you can't touch the main building. And then when you go into another one, you can't touch that one. It was, I made sure because I looked around, there's security guards. I'm like, can I touch this? 
And it was it was an older part, but it was you can't go inside and touch those. But you can feel it walking in there. Like I'm I was seeing a different time and place. It was really really upsetting. So I can't imagine living in those times back then when people experienced that kind of stuff, seeing so much death over and over. You know. Oh, I know. And um, Jenny is asking, where can I find your evidence of your research, your history, in the audio? And I did in the description put all of the links to everything that's ghost hunting beauties. Mm -hmm. But where would you recommend is the best place to find it? Like the, the top mm -hmm. spot where you're like, yeah, this is my favorite place to put it. That would be on TikTok as we have the where you'll see I have videos where I've gone live. I have videos to where um, I've recorded and playback audio. Um, I even have one that I didn't get a chance to upload today because, you know, I, I got a full time working with my other business and I didn't have time to upload today's. But usually TikTok is the main place where I'll put any type of where you can hear audio any type where you can see the the things we've captured from the lives. Um, Cause I'm a big fan of audio as well. That one I struggle with on some of the bigger ghost hunting shows is sometimes they'll hear something and then I don't hear it. But on a lot of the things we've gotten from the SB seven has been really clear. And it's, but it kind of freaked me out cause it was the first time I turned on the SB seven. I have that one on TikTok to where you can see that. There we go. TikTok is where we have most of our evidence. That's where we have most of our paranormal enthusiasts, too. We've met some of the coolest people on TikTok who've influenced us, who've taught us things. And I'm like I said, I think I told you this before we started the show, is that that's where I that's kind of my guilty pleasure is watching other people ghost hunt. And I'm sitting there going, oh, look out behind you. And it's like, oh. And, and sometimes if I, I sneak in on my personal profile, I'm not my ghost hunting beauty so that people don't ask me too many questions because <laughs> I don't want it to. I, I had that happen by accident before I was embarrassed. I went in on a TikTok live where they did an investigation and someone goes, oh, yeah, you're from the, the ghost hunting thing. And I went, oh, and they're like, you're a medium, too. Right. So let me ask you a question. And 50 people. Question after question after question after question after question, and they all tagged me. And then I felt terrible because then I couldn't even watch the ghost hunting. And now this guy who's arranged this live is everyone's talking to me. And I'm like, look, 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 look. I'm not here for that. I'm not. And then this is when it's the first time I think I've ever gotten mad in the paranormal world ever is a girl jumped in and goes, I want to see demons and I want you to show them to me. And I went, what? He goes, do I have a demon next to me? That's all I want to know. And I said, no. And I was like, I don't see a demon standing next to you. She goes, but I want one. I'm almost like a child. So I'm like, what is she, 10? So I'm like looking on her thing. And it's like, no, she's probably either my age or a little bit younger. And she was wanting me to conjure a demon to attach to her. And I lost my temper in the chat. And it's the first time I've ever done that. I said, anyone who's ever stared evil in the face would never beg to see it again. And, and then people went, You're, you got that right. And people were, then it was, I felt people were ganging up on her. And then I was like, look, I don't even want to be here anymore. No more ghost hunting. I don't want to talk to anybody. If you, any of you would like a private reading, send me a message. And then I think I did 10 private readings in the next few days. And then I got deathly sick. So when I have lupus, so a lot of times with mediumship and different things, you can get very sick and very drained, especially if you're not good at blocking it out and doing 10 back to back. I was so sick. I was really like my medicine wasn't working. So I, I, pulled back from doing that. And even with the show, we do space things out. So we, we space out our, our ghost hunting and I space out. If I ever do a reading, I, I pulled back from that because I've learned my lesson. Right. Cause people don't realize it takes time and energy to go into the zone or is what I call it. And to come out and reset it, there is time. It's not a, 
just flick a switch. Okay, we're in the mode. Flick the switch. Okay, I'm back to normal. Let's go do this now. Right. It, it was very upsetting because it was so many people. I know they needed my help. And then that girl had just set me off. And I didn't understand why it set me off. And I didn't want to tap into her because she was so negative. And I did. I did, couldn't control it. And it's one of the first times I've ever really seen an angel with their hand on someone's shoulder, pushing them down. It was just an odd vision. And I mean, I've consulted two other psychics because it disturbed me so bad. I said, angels are supposed to lift you up and, and be there. And, and angels, oh, no. the angels don't generally show themselves unless it's serious. This one was binding her and protecting her because it was like, you're not about to do whatever you're going to do. And I thought, that's odd. I've never seen an angel like almost physically restraining someone. And I, I had to go and block her because I wanted her to never find me again. I, I will not communicate or have anything to do with people who chase the darkness. Like if you find the darkness, that's different. If you're purposely going, I want the devil to show himself tonight. I'm bye. I'm out. No, thank you. It's like Honestly. I've been married enough times to have seen the devil myself. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm with you. I'm like, if that's what you're wanting to conjure, there's a mental hospital down the road. I'm sure that'll be happy to give you a room for a while and uh, help you out. But I, definitely, I do, dark. Yeah. I do not. It's one my one rule too that anybody that um, I'm interviewing for season two. That's the one thing is that I say if you bring something dark with you on purpose, or you go in ghost hunting with us and you try to conjure something dark, I was like, not only will I boot you. But I will boot you with a priest. <laughs> and it's like we will make sure that that never comes to our show, our energy, or any of that. Because right before our show launched is when I was researching a lot of the exorcisms and darker things. I was researching because Yorktown, I've heard, holds the dark stuff. And I want to be prepared. You know, there's there's nothing I've seen that goes in case you cross paths with a demon and it's like, Oh, like a survival checklist, you know, like, what do you right. think? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll certainly be sure to wear that color. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. So I was researching and a lot of things after researching bad stuff started happening to me. And I'm like, maybe I'll stop researching some of this. <laughs> so sometimes I, anything dark and negative, I really do try to block out because you know, I know I'm going to come across dark and negative things. That's, a given we're going to locations where things happen but i am not going to try to stir it up i am not going to conjure it up and i'm not going to have anyone else do it i totally agree and that is just definitely is beyond why anybody would even want to even approach that as a possibility and wanted me to do it. I was like, oh, oh, that's in my skill set. You know, I went, went and took a course for that last week, how to conjure up demons, you know. <laughs> I'm sure they probably have courses like that, but nope, sorry. That's, I'm going to, anything that's dark or negative, I don't even care what label you put on it. Because some people have told me demons aren't bad. And it's like, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if I've really met one. I've seen dark things, but I don't know what label they wore. They didn't have a name tag. They just looked scary to me. <laughs> I didn't go, oh, you're okay, and that's what you are. Got it. What do you mean they didn't have their name tag on? Come on, what kind of demons are you coming across? <laughs> right. From what I've heard, they never want you to know their name. That's the one thing I've heard from exorcists and people who have performed exorcisms is the demons don't want you to know their name. And I would like to know why. Like, I want someone to explain to me why. Like, what does that mean if you know their name? Like, it's the worst thing ever for them. Like, I thought that they would be like, ha ha, I'm so-and-so, but apparently not. So, actually, I can explain that to you. Is yeah. In angel lore and demonology and everything, to know a spirit's true name gives you power over it. Really? So, if you were to learn, like, a demon's true name then the belief is that you now control that demon and it'll do your bidding 
Really? So demons and angels are very careful with their true names yeah. because they don't want anybody being able to. But um, if you check your uh, Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. that I was reaching out to you on, I sent you two photos cool. from your town cool. that you asked for. I'm going to look at them in the daytime. <laughs> I would. <laughs> and not in the nighttime before I go to bed because I'm going to wake up and there's going to be a demon on my chest. I'm going to be like, dang it, what's your name? Wish I can't see your name tag. It's kind of blurry. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, are you the one that the girl was asking for? It's like, I have a friend to send you to. <laughs> show up at her house. Because I, I actually did when we started the show, the activity in my house did start kicking up a lot. Like I've always, like I said, spirits follow me and do things. And Old Town Spring was where something followed me home. And I have to be really careful with that after investigations. That's I try to tell people you have to declare your intentions you have to set up your boundaries. You know, it's the same as if you walked into, let's say, a networking event and you don't want to discuss religion. Like if you walk in there and you say, look, the one topic I don't want to talk about here is religion. We're here to network and do business. Then people are not going to usually talk about that. They, oh, that's off limits. But if that one person goes and by the way, I can't stand blah, blah, blah religion. Then you're like, oh, you're thinking about it for days. That negative energy follows you home so it's the same as when you go in there because spirits don't have to necessarily listen to you but i think if you're respectful to them they're respectful back to you if you go look like i've told them i have had i have had that on video and i need to find that footage and upload it to my ghost hunting beauties tiktok i don't have that one uploaded because it was way before i started the show the last time i lived in uh, we had cereal boxes sitting up on top of the fridge and I'm sitting there watching TV and we do have a camera that's in our house. You know, we, you know, we believe in having cameras outside and I had a camera that's in my living room. So you can see me watching TV and you see something fly across the kitchen off the top of the refrigerator. And I'm stand up. My first instinct was thinking my daughter threw something and I go, what did you throw? And then she comes out and you hear her upstairs going, ma'am. I said, what did you throw? She goes, I didn't throw anything. I'm in my room. I'm like, did you drop something? She goes, no. So I go into the kitchen and I see the big cereal box is very far away from the fridge. So it didn't get like thrown downward. It just fell or someone shut a door and it shook off. It launched across the kitchen. So I was, and that is on my home camera way before I started this show. We've had stuff happen here during podcasts. We, we, we were talking about exorcisms and the lights went, zoop. I went, you're kidding me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, and then Amy from SPI, she goes, I'm not here for you. And then I was like, man, really? We've had that kind of conversation a couple of times. <laughs> we've had like, audio, I'm not here for you. <laughs> <laughs> we've had audio mess up. Uh, one of the podcasts we did, he had to come back and call me and said that half of the podcast got glitched. And it was when we were talking about the darker things. So I'm like, there's something to it or these things wouldn't keep happening. Like you can, you don't have to be a believer. This is what I tell people. Like I have people that are a fan of the show that absolutely don't believe in what we're doing. They're hardcore skeptics. And they're like, are we allowed to watch and criticize? I said, absolutely. It's like, you don't need to just believe everything people tell you are here. But I want you to try to be open-minded that there are things that happen to us that you can't explain. That's it. You can label it whatever you want to label it. Even there are things I don't know, like cryptids I'm learning about. Cryptids are new to me. We did a podcast on that. I'm learning about, you know, I've asked people about the Bigfoot debate. We've done that. Things with angels. I go, is it something that's religious? Is this something that, are they aliens? Like, I am very open-minded and I love hearing different beliefs. The only thing I don't tolerate on any of our channels is people coming in, trying to criticize each other, like being spiteful right, or someone problem. going, you're a liar and you're just evil or people being like that, that that's not welcome for our stuff at all. 
I can respect that. And I would like to talk more about that, but we are actually like eight minutes away from two hours. Well, I told you we could go all night. <laughs> Spooky season. So we will definitely have to have you back on and talk yeah, more about this. And But uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time and it's like, and I'm like, man, I just getting to some more interesting topics and I'm like, I want to keep going, but I can't. <laughs> we'll do part two. <laughs> Definitely. I, I will be in touch to schedule that with you guys. And I want to thank you for coming on. And it was a real pleasure getting to know you and talk with you. And thank you to the everyone in the chat room. Um, if you have any other questions, we um, save them for the next episode because I can guarantee you we are going to have a second episode because there's just too much that we're talking about to leave it at this point. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike, for having us. I mean, I really appreciate this. I mean, we, we feel it's an honor to sit here and talk to you and especially to have audience come in and ask us questions is even, is even cooler. I love it. <laughs> uh, I have an awesome audience. You do. You do. So we will be little housekeeping. So we'll be back next week with Joshua Lewis on the show. So stay tuned for that. And if wherever you are in the world, have yourself a great night, a great day, or a great afternoon. Whichever it is, just make sure it's great. So we're going to say good night for now, and we'll see you on the next one. You have just listened to the energy that surrounds us with your host, Michael Koff. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.